A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? A little more, and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff which with, with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and the water will flow. The water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand and we boast in hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. According to John. Glory to you, Lord. Lord, be in my mind, on my lips, and in my heart. Jesus came to a town of Samaria named Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how can you, a Jew, Ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink. For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself, with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand, because salvation is from the Jews. 
But the hour is coming, is now here, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one who is called the Christ. When he comes, will he tell us everything? Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word. And they said to the woman, we no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this is truly the savior of the world. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. So here we are on our way to Calvary on this the third week of Lent and what do we hear? A conversation between Jesus and a woman married five times. It's bizarre enough for a Scorsese film. Or maybe an opportunity to weigh in on Pope Francis opening to the divorced and remarried. Or the new Vatican congregation for the advancement of women's leadership in the church. But how does that draw us toward Jesus, toward Calvary, toward Easter? Certainly this woman at the well has something to offer us. First, let's just take a moment and consider the first reading that the church has chosen for people to hear throughout the world on this Sunday. From the book of Exodus, we hear in those days the people, because of their thirst, began to grumble against Moses. Now for them, in those days, water coming miraculously from a rock answered their prayers. But they were unaware that the only true satisfaction for their thirst would come from Jesus Christ, the living water. So today, if Jesus asks me to give him a drink, and I believe he does, how do I respond? Life is full of so many challenges. It's so hard, so easy for us to harden our hearts. There are many billionaires in our world today. Have you noticed how happy they are? Not. You would expect that with all that wealth, all that security, they would be enjoying life. Something is missing. As we look around, we see so many problems in our world. 
we see pain and suffering, divisiveness. We see hunger. We see thirst. We see anxiety, anger, politics. So many places, so many people, so in need, so thirsty. How do I respond? How do you respond? If you hear Jesus say, give me a drink. I think we realize we're blessed. We're blessed living where we do and how we do. We're blessed with retirement, with money, secure homes, good families, 26 point victories on the way to maybe a national championship. I guess we're never satisfied. <laughs> because the only real satisfaction in our lives comes through Jesus Christ, who thirsts. In the same Gospel of St. John, later, from the cross, just before he died, Jesus says, I thirst. Nobody got it then, but John, who remembered Jesus saying to this woman, if you knew who was asking you for a drink of water, you would, oh, I'm from Philly, water and water are the same thing. If you knew who was asking you for a drink of water, you would have asked him for living water. He does thirst. He does ask for a drink. The drink he seeks is our openness, our receptivity, our integrity, essentially our love. And we know unlike those people way back in Moses' day, that our thirst will only be satisfied with Jesus Christ. As St. Paul says in the second reading today, our hope will be fulfilled because the Spirit of God will be poured into us. We have no reason to fear. And that's good news. <laughs>